Okay guys, so I got three cultures from Maine Cap and Stem, and it cost me like 400 bucks. So, um, and I'm not complaining about that. Uh, these are great cultures. Uh, I've had them before, and these ones are like as fresh out of cryo as you can buy them from them. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to dig into this. Uh, I'm going to transfer it up to other plates. Water agar, I'm even going to make some liquid culture right now because I need some for the Black Kings especially. Um, I'm not going to really show that. I am going to come back after it's colonized. I can cut to like that little part that I have showing all the stuff in the pressure cooker that I'll be using. So I'm in here about to get the pressure cooker ready full of goodies that we're going to use to store our cultures pretty much. So we have some regular old agar over here. Uh, I'm going to make some regular plates uh, compared to the polypropylene plates I've been using. And we have some water agar here and I'll dig into water agar in another video um, and the benefits of it. Uh, but we're going to want this for a less common reason uh, than most people use water agar. It's just uh, water and agar. It would be followed according to your uh, regular agar recipe, just minus the nutrients. Um, we do have about 10 milliliters of water in the 15 milliliter vials, the polypropylene vials. Uh, a ring with two synthetic filter discs kind of acts as a filter patch uh, container for sterilizing uh, tools and materials. Got a thing of forceps in here, but uh, yeah, some water just in case uh, the conical flasks uh, bust open and leave me high and dry. It's always good to have some backup sterile water, in my opinion, when you're using things like that. But uh, yeah, we're going to sterilize all this so when the cultures get here, uh, everything will be ready to go. Um, got a bunch of those. And, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Minus the liquid culture that I already had made. That has like really nothing to do with the culture storage because this is gonna kinda, I'm gonna do like an unboxing of this and then I'm gonna get into how to store the cultures long term. How I do it, what I think is the best way. Let's see what we got here. Much bigger box than I expected. Okay, 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 okay. Very much foam. Oh wow, what the heck? Oh, thanks. Oh no. Eight, eight panels of foam. Freezer bricks. Still completely frozen. Much better than I expected. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. It was still super frozen. Uh, I'm going to save those. More bubble wrap. Oh, my gosh. Okay. More. Wow, we got eight of these all together. These things are big. Like, these things are big. So for it, uh, those of you guys spending a lot of money on cultures, I hope that you get this kind of quality. We got our POPini. And a backup for your painting. Should have two of each plate. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this on the camera. Stepping on some bubble wrap. Yeah, that's not going to work. I mean, this one is like completely colonized. It's just all white. This one, I mean, you can see it a little bit more. You can kind of see that there's an edge around here, I think. So. Well, I'm not going to open these right here. That's pretty cool, actually. These are in sterile containers themselves. There are little filter patch bags, which is super cool. I really like that. Uh, so you get pretty much two plates for a hundred bucks. Looking at these black oysters. Hmm. I will say that both of these ones are already grown to the edges. And these ones are a little bit yellow. Maybe I'll flip the camera around real quick and we'll take a closer look at them here in just a second. Then we have our blue oyster. Um, yeah, plates are... Uh, these ones are grown onto the lids. Yeah, we'll take this up real quick. Get this big old box out of here. Okay, so we got the Piopinis over here. Seem a little bit better, I think. These ones have a lot of condensation on them. Let's look at the uh, the blues. And these uh, kings, you can kind of see the color difference. These, <clears throat> I'd almost say look like they were in the refrigerator, colonized about to where that first line is. And then, uh, yeah, they kind of grew out during shipping the rest of the way. Kind of a similar thing here. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and transfer some of these to agar. Um, I won't be putting any of these directly into water because I'm going to colonize water agar so there's no nutrients in the solution. That they are stored in will just be mycelium. Uh, I'm gonna send actually one of the each of these out. Um, yeah, and I want to make a little bit of liquid culture real quick. So we'll come back here in a minute.
just wanted to get in here real quick and uh, kind of give a rundown on these plates. I mean, they're good. Uh, was a little concerned on some of this yellowing, but uh, you know, it's probably just metabolites. Uh, which is really normal. I just didn't expect the plate to be overgrown, I guess. Um, I expect that they might ship it out a little more like this. I'm actually getting ready to ship this. Uh, granted, this transfer is exceptionally larger than it needs to be. Uh, I was going to ship these out days ago, even early. But uh, this is about maybe a little bit sooner even than I would ship a regular culture. Uh, I would definitely try to ship it before that point. Again, huge transfer. But uh, I'd personally prefer it undergrown than overgrown. <clears throat> and these were done four days ago. And mine, these were next day shipping as well. I'll ship these today. Um, just kind of wanted to touch on that. I guess why I was looking at them so closely. I'm sure that <clears throat> some people might be skeptical of the metabolites or um, perceiving them as bacteria. Me personally, I was <clears throat> hoping for a younger culture mainly because of what I understand as mitochondrial activity within the cell, primarily at the leading ends of hyphae. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. That that has more to do with vigor, I'd say, as far as like obtaining young genetics. I'm not too worried about it. So, uh, great cultures overall from main calf and stem. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we'll come back to back those up after the water agar is cottonized. Can, uh, looking at this one, this transfer. Let's see, it's already starting to come back. Very much so. So we'll come back when these are colonized. Okay guys, so we're in here getting ready to back up the cultures to sterile water. Uh, I've put the just regular agar transfers in the fridge. Um, just got these out to show. I let them colonize about that far. Put them in the fridge. Also those are just first transfer backups. Um, I kind of made them just because I won't be really using those as much actually. I'll primarily be using the water agar dishes. Um, hopefully I can get a good picture so you can see that this plate's almost completely colonized from just the transfer there in the center. This is uh, the blue oyster. Piopini. And what I'll do, I'll just take a bunch of sections from each of these plates and then put it into the sterile water. That way it will be stored without nutrients and it will be the mycelium alone. It would give no opportunity for contaminants to expand. And it would keep the mycelium hydrated, which is the main reason people use slants, I suppose. I feel like this is a better option. So, we're going to go ahead and cut all these up and be putting them into these vials. I'm going to try to get about 24 pieces per vial, so if you wanted to, you could go back every month for two years. We have several plates. I don't know if I'll do all of them. We're just going to kind of make some backups and see how we go even be storing these and uh, yeah I think I'll kind of record part of that and show you guys how I go about it. <laughs> 